And in the screen share, maybe just for a little moment, you can kind of zoom out mm -hmm. just to show that on if we zoom out, we will zoom in just to have a big font. But if you zoom out, you can see that there will be a couple of episodes. We will go through some of them today. We will go through some of them tomorrow for, for the team leaders. Uh, you might be interested in and the reference instructor guide, you can find a detailed schedule for today, which we will try to follow. So again, the, the plan is that we will do three exercise sessions today. The first one will start in roughly 40 minutes after the first break. Um, and in the under instructor guide detail schedule, you can find our detail plan. And um, we will Today and tomorrow, we'll talk about version control and Git. This is one of my most used tools. I use it almost every day. I think it's one of the most important tools for code development, but also for reproducibility. It will be a tool that will really form a red line through all the workshop. So we want, we want to form a really good basis. That's why we will spend three half days on on version control, Git, GitHub, to give you this really solid basis. And then next week, we will build on top of it and visit. So next week, we will talk about reproducibility and about documenting code, licensing, testing, modular code development, notebooks. But all of this will build on top of version control. Should we maybe go straight into motivation, why we even do that? Motivation, part one. Yeah. And I put the link, the link is in the notes, so you can follow it. And now we can also, you can zoom in a little bit to have a larger font there for everybody to watch. And uh, thank you. And everybody, as we, so, so now we want to motivate why we do that, but please continue asking questions. I'm, we are watching the notes and this is really how you can influence uh, the stream. So Git and version control, it's all about keeping track of changes. And here we have two screenshots. One is we will, we will start in the terminal. So this is how it, how it will look in the terminal. We see a series of changes. So as we will be developing our research code, we will record changes with metadata. And what we see here, and we will make sense of it, this is the metadata. So each change will have an identifier and each change will have an author and it will have a timestamp and it will also have a description. And we will see that this is a very useful thing. So this is how it will look in a terminal. How does it look on a web? We will, we will also, of, often we will uh, offer you a way to, to work in a terminal or in a web. And so this, this here, I guess. Yeah. So this is a screenshot that actually shows the same history, but in the web overview. So you, the, the learners, you can try to compare the two. You will see that there are these identifiers and there is the metadata, there are authors and descriptions. And this is what we want to learn today, how to record these changes. So by the end of the day, we'll be making one of these histories of some project. Yes, already actually before, even before the lunch break. Yeah. And why do we need, why is this a good thing to do? Why do we keep track of changes and of versions? And here we wrote down a couple of questions that maybe you can relate to. Oh, I can tell a story. So mm -hmm. back when I was using version control, I mean, not at the beginning, but let's say in the middle of my journey, there'd be this common pattern I'd have. And I'd go and be using version control OK and say, OK, well, I'm working on something, but I want it to be perfect looking. So I'm not committing just yet until it's done. And I go and I work and I work and I work until I've broken my code. And it doesn't work anymore. And it's not just it doesn't run, but it's not giving me the same results as it used to. And then it's been several days since I committed. And then it ends up taking several more days to go back and figure out what broke and get it back how it was. And this is even with a snapshot from several days ago after adding in all this extra on track stuff. And I think this is really like the kind of story that motivates me. So 
we're all busy people, we're all working, but if you can't remember what you used to do, it's going to break and change in a way that either hurts you mm -hmm. now or hurts you in the future when, for example, paper revisions come back and your code doesn't do the same thing anymore. Yeah. So this workshop is about collaborating, but not only collaborating with your colleagues, also collaborating with your future self. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe some of these questions here resonate with you and version control and Git, they are an answer to these questions. Questions like, well, where is the latest version? And, or, or the answer to the question, my laptop is gone, is my thesis now gone? <laughs> yeah. It used to work. Strange, when did it change? And we will, today and tomorrow and the next days, we will come back to these questions and we will really see how, how we can use this tool to answer those. Yeah. And the more bigger picture here, if you scroll down just a little bit, the features, so it can do two or three things, basically. One is to the rollback, we can go back. If we mess up, I deleted something accidentally or suddenly it doesn't work anymore, I can go take a step back. But it can do two really nice, wonderful things. And they are depicted in these with these cute gophers. So we can do branching and merging. Because so in this in this in this image, somebody want, was working on adding a feature, adding new sunglasses. But at the same time, independently, uh, the same person or somebody else can work on a different feature um, on a different branch. And so the other branch is called the graduation head branch. And you can also see that there is the main branch. And then these, these independent developments can then be merged back into the main development line. And at the end, we have the cute gopher with sunglasses and with the graduation head. And this is not only good for collaborating with other people. We'll also see that even if you are alone in the project, you can use this to if you want to experiment with an idea and you are not sure whether this is a good idea, you can then develop on a branch. So branching and merging is also something that we will use quite a bit. Yeah. And do we get to that today or tomorrow? We will get to that today. OK. So let's learn more about it then. Yeah. What else? Reproducibility, really the main, the main subject of this workshop. And Without tools like version control and Git, you will have a hard time to indicate. So how do you indicate which version of the code have you used in your paper? And this is so important for, for others and your future you. There will also be a moment, sooner or later, we all find a problem in our code. We find a bug. And then the next question is, we want to, it's really good if we can find out since when precisely was the bug there since when precisely did it exist? And we have an example there. So this is the so-called annotation feature, which we will revisit later in both on our computer and on the web, where we can annotate code. So here is some Python code on the, on the right half of the, the screen. And it is on the left side of the screen is the annotation. So for each line of the code, if we find a problem, we can go to the left part of the screen and figure out when precisely was this line changed and by whom and with what metadata. And this is so important for reproducibility. Also, you, you maybe want to know, was this, did I introduce the bug before I published the paper or after I published the paper? And try to answer this question without, mm -hmm. uh, without version control. Yeah. So this is why we do this. We will come back to this example. This is really only a, like a gallery of examples to get us motivated. Yeah. Talking about code, um, we will also see that using the web interface makes it easier with our colleagues to discuss code. So instead of writing an email and giving instructions on, well, you should download the code, then find a specific file, search for a specific line, make sure that you have the version from August 2023, I can send you a link to a code portion with that particular timestamp. And there is no doubt about what we are talking about. It makes it so much easier. And code is not the only thing we, we like to version control or snapshot. 
So it is not only software, it can be scripts. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a document, a manuscript, you know, your, your thesis manuscript or your paper manuscript. It can be configuration files, website files, data. All of our lessons are under version control. What's Almost the craziest thing that you've ever version control? I think at some point I tried to version control my entire hard disk. That was not a good idea. <laughs> Because as we will see later, for big files, there are better alternatives. Mm -hmm. How about you? I've... Uh, maybe I... I want to say this one shared directory of basically all the big files, which didn't work so well. Mm -hmm. Maybe more reasonable. So after this course, I'm going to use Git and an extension called Git Annex to save all the videos and transfer them around between the recording computer and other computers in our cluster to produce the videos by midnight today. Mm -hmm. OK. I wish I could version control my life. So, and <laughs> if I mess up, I could go back and I could branch out and try something out. But at least we can do it in a computer. Mm -hmm. Looking at the time we have, I want to keep us really on the time. We have maybe one or two more minutes before I would like to really get our hands dirty with actual Git and version control. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can leave this discussion for the readers. Yeah, we can come back. OK, difficulties. We That's will meet difficulties. Yeah, it's a new thing to learn. And also, maybe, hopefully, we will manage to get all of you on board. Uh, uh, but you need to collaborate with your collaborators. Maybe they are not on board. So here are some some suggestions of what, what you can do. Um, the other difficulty that we will have, especially first day, is that some of you use Git since a couple of weeks. Some of you use Git since a couple of years. Many of you are completely new to Git. But we will try to keep everybody interested and motivated. I think we will have something new for everybody, including the instructors. So even though in a brief moment we will really start from scratch because we want to get you all on the same page, we will offer also to the more experienced, we will offer some interesting questions, interesting tracks to, to think about. Um, if any of that now seems a little bit too easy. You can also ask us lots of questions on the on the notes. Maybe help try to help answer questions on the notes. So this is not only for for the organizers to answer questions, mm -hmm. but we really do this. So we we show you Git. We will show you GitHub because these are the most popular tools these days to do version control. They are not the only tools, but they are the most popular tools. Mm -hmm. It will be. One new thing to learn. There will be some difficulties, but we think it's worth it. Yeah. OK. Should anything else? Should we look at the questions people have asked? Let's show how this works. So from the intro, does Blame work for other programming languages than Python? Yes, absolutely. It basically goes by lines. So the, set, the view we saw there would work for anything. And someone says whole files if they're binaries, which I hadn't seen myself, but I'm sure it can be done. The permanent link, I think that's probably there. Most of the nice research of version control work only with text files. Yeah, so I'd say that's about right. It does work with other things. It's not perfect, but if you ask me, it's better than nothing. For example, for my work, we store a bunch of pictures in Git, which can't be diffed and stuff like that, but it's better than it getting lost because it's nowhere. OK, should we go on then? Yes, let's move on to Git Basics. We are 15 minutes away from a break. And before the break, we want to uh, introduce a little bit the basics and also make sure that everybody has Git configured. 
Okay, so we're going to start typing soon, I guess. We will soon start typing, but we will tell you, but you can already prepare your terminal. Here, first of all, let's have a, have a little bit closer look of what Git is. Git is, we will talk about commits, and commits are these changes that we record. And everything that we will do today, it will all be recorded, it will all stay on our computer, so it doesn't travel over the internet yet. Um, we will create a Git repository in a moment, we will record changes, and they will all stay locally. A Git will also not do anything automatically. So we will need to tell Git, please record a change. It will not sort of automatically autosave it, like some tools do. And when we record a change, maybe you can scroll down just half the screen, we will, in the terminal, recommend to, to do it in two steps. So we will stage a file, and we will, for this, use git add, and then we will commit the change. And one, one way to think about it is it's like when you take a photo with a photo camera. You first focus on the object, and you can imagine that this is the staging. You arrange the scene. You, like, you tell people to move closer together, yeah. And then once you're happy, then you commit, you, you press the shutter. And then that's where we create a new commit. That's where, when we record the, the change set. So this analogy is not perfect, but it's maybe a useful way to think about it. And now let's move on to configuring Git. So this is an important step. We should now all make sure that we have done it. If, if you went through the install instructions, then you have done it. If you have been to our install, install help, then we went through it together. But we now want to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So these four commands, we should now open the terminal. So open git bash on Windows and open a bash or Z shell terminal on Mac OS or Linux. And really type these four commands. You will need to replace your name by your name. Uh, the user email ideally should be the same as you have registered on GitHub. So here I am in my thing. So I'll be typing this. So the first one is Git. Oh, great. Yeah. So Richard types, and, and everybody who hasn't done it yet, please type with us. What does global mean? Global means that this setting will affect all Git repositories on my computer. And we think that these four settings are good for all Git repositories. So your name is on the wrong screen here. Sorry. OK. OK. And enter. And it doesn't, it doesn't tell me anything, but it actually worked. So this information is saved somewhere. And further down, you can then find out where it is saved. Uh, let's also set the user email. Uh, I use my actual email here. But if you read, there's a way you can use something else. And yeah. this email is just used as some identifier. It's not actually like you can technically put anything there. Hmm. OK, what's the next the, slide? The editor is important. So this should be your favorite editor. And now we know that many people are new to text editors. So if you don't know what to answer here, you should answer Nano. But, but if you have a preferred text editor, like BI, Vim, Emacs, VS Code, you can choose a different editor. If you are new to text editors, choose Nano. The last setting will is to make sure that oh, our default add branch that um, the editor may have been set. It was setting the editor was also in the installation instructions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe it's already done. Yeah, and the default branch. Yeah, which will make it a little bit smoother for us to have the same experience locally and on GitHub. OK, should we verify? Let's do it. Verify with git config dash dash list. Hey, look, it works. So this shows me my configuration settings, if I forgot them. Maybe you see more output here. So for those of you who try it out, maybe you see some additional settings. That's not a problem. But we want to make sure that we have these four settings. Yeah. OK. I will, so this opened a pager for me. I can push Q to exit this. Maybe you don't need that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good.
So what now? I guess continue scrolling down. Yes, we have now. We are less than ten minutes away from a break. We want to now together create our first repository. So please type along. Type along with us. Type along with Richard. Okay. And. Uh, what we will do is we will uh, write code, but we thought it would be really fun to, instead of deciding with which language, should it be R, should it be JavaScript, should it be Python, we thought it would be fun to together develop a guacamole recipe. Because I think everybody can relate to cooking and eating. Uh, I'm a big fan of really cooking recipes and cooking and baking. So we will together develop a guacamole recipe and we will learn Git. And at the same time, we will get a tasty guacamole recipe. So if you scroll a little bit down, um, okay. there is actually a choice. So creating a repository, we will now all try to do that. There is a choice here. Here with Richard, we will follow the command line. So we will type these commands in a moment to create a new directory and to set up a new repository. There is also this other tab. Maybe you can just click it that of you can also try to do these in the browser on GitHub. So many of the things that we show, one can do that directly on the web. Why do we have this here? This can be interesting for the most more experienced among you. If you already know the commands, but you want to try it out in the web, try it out in the web. This is also here that if you get stuck and something very basic doesn't work, we didn't want you to give up the workshop, but instead either take it as a demo or watch what we do or try it out in a browser. So this is an alternative. So feel free to watch, but we will go back to the command line. And now in our terminal in the git bash or so, similar terminals, we will we want to now create this recipe. So right now is everyone typing or just me? Everybody should type. Okay. So these three com three commands. So we start by we want to have a new new directory. It's a pristine new directory. There is nothing inside. We call it recipe. MKD creates it with CD. We change directory into it. Okay, yeah. And this command git init minus b main, this is the one that will initialize a git repository. It will create an empty git repository. The minus b main tells git that we want to call our default branch main. We will explain what branches are later today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, now I, I also like how in your screen, I can also see the history of your commands. So if, if you follow and you, you, you don't, you, you got a bit lost, but you can, I can see then on this little screen, your history. Okay. So I'm so pushing enter. Push enter. Hey, and we hey. are informed that this seemed to have worked. You can see the whole line there. OK, so we've got a, so this is the repository. Mm -hmm. So what do we do now with it? And now we will do a git status. This is a safe command to do anytime, anytime you want to know what's going on in my repository. Where am I? It's an information command. It tells us that there are no commits. Commits are these changes that we, was, we want to save. Nothing is there yet. This is an empty thing. Uh, we are on a branch called main, and there is nothing to commit yet. So we should maybe start creating some files and Git adding them. So we see okay. this hint from, from, uh, from Git. So let's do that. And okay. now the goal for all of us will be in your favorite editor, if you don't have one yet, then use nano. So Richard will use nano. We will create two files. One will be called ingredients.txt, ingredients.txt. So with this command line editor, I tell it the name of the file to edit, and it opens. Yeah. Uh, and in there, you can either type or try to copy paste from the web these four ingredients, avocados, chili, lime, and salt. OK. Mm -hmm. And let's give people just a and second to catch up. Exit yeah. Nano. yeah, but maybe let's wait uh, just a moment. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. 
Let's give people a moment here because everybody needs to find their editor, open it up. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it funny also... how it's always the very getting started part takes so much longer. Yeah. But that's okay. That's good. I mean, we are really well on time. No problem at all. Um, maybe just leave it here for a few more moments. I'm catching up with questions and comments to see. Uh, but all of it seems really well answered. About the question 11, there is also in our install instructions, there is there is information about that. I will have the answer there too. Every editor has its own magic commands to do that. And I will add a link in a moment. I think it's good to have this one more minute to... Maybe we can start with the second file. So, yeah. uh, so save to this. To save this in Nano, I do Control X and then push Y to save and then enter. It's really simple, but that's why we suggest Nano if you don't know anything. So you probably won't be using Nano in your real life, but well, that's how it works. Yeah. Okay. And Next. you can also, we need the second file called instructions because recipes needs ingredients and instructions. Okay. Nano instructions txt and in there, this we time I will copy and paste. Copy paste. We start with chopping avocados and so on and so on and so on. And how did you save again? And how did you exit here? The, the nano was it so control? It was control X. Yeah. It, so this mark means control. So control X, and then Y, and then enter. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. And after we're done. And I'm talking really slowly because I want to give people the possibility to catch up. It's the git status command, my favorite git command, which we want to know what's going on. Now, git can see that there are two files, but they are untracked. Git is not yet tracking the changes. Yeah. And we want to start tracking this. We will. We won't want to now all together start creating our first commits. And we will commit the changes one by one. If I look at your, the screen, it says untracked files, use git add, etc. etc. to to that's what we want to do. Should I do that then? Yeah, the next command is git add ingredients the text. So we start with one, not, not both. Let's do that. Enter. And now get status again. You will see that one of the files is staged. We call it staged. It is about to be committed. The other file is still untracked. So after we did git add ingredients.txt, the next now we want to commit it. We want to commit the change. Git commit space minus m. The commit message. What should and I in say? There, adding ingredients. Yeah. Or maybe uh, maybe people sequence? are better. Uh, let's follow the uh, adding ingredients. Yeah. Okay. And then enter. Enter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we I got some status? outputs. Git status again. So basically, I'm running git status after every single command here. Okay. So it's at. Instructions, OK. And now we or, want to no, do the same thing no, with no. instructions. So git add instructions. OK. Git commit minus m. We want to make a new commit where we save the instructions. And we will enter. Yeah. And now okay. we want to create a third file and a third commit. Um, and it's a readme file. OK, so now we have to figure this out ourselves. So nano, nano readme.md. MD. This will be our documentation recipe. OK, and I will save. Save and exit. do the same thing as before. Git add, readme, git commit.
And I guess I'm trusting that git status will show the things that I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. Okay, should I get status just to make sure? Yes. On branch main, nothing to commit, work tree clean. That sounds good. So we have now three files. Can you do an ls in your terminal to list them? Okay. All right, so there are three files. Um, let's try maybe one more thing before the break, and that is I want to see where are these commits even. So we create some commits. Where are they? Um, mm -hmm. Should we do a git log? Git log? We will come back to that command. This color doesn't look right somehow. Yeah. So there are some extra characters. But we see um, the basic idea here. Yeah. So there are three. We did three commits. There is some metadata. How do you get out of this with a queue? Q. Q. Pressing Q, you get out of that. And where is this? Where are these commits? Hmm. Should, well. Let's do an ls, ls minus la. It will give me a little bit more information. ls minus a. So this lists everything. And we see there's a hidden directory called git yeah. here with a dot in front. And that's basically where everything is being stored. Great. OK. So, so what would it be achieved? We, uh, we configured Git. We created a new repository. We created three commits. If that went a little bit too fast, not a problem. After the break, we will have an exercise session. And during that exercise session, there is enough time to catch up. Mm -hmm. I recommend that we explain the exercise after the break to make sure that we all start at the same mm -hmm. same waypoint. But now I would like to take a 10 minute break until five minutes um, past the hour. And I will put, let's put it also in the document so that everybody knows. So we will back here, we will be back here on the stream five minutes past the hour. And then we will explain the exercise. And then we will have our first exercise session. Mm -hmm. So See you later. Has Take a break. OK. See you later. Bye. So I think I have maybe difficulties okay. hearing the counting, but oh, are we live? Are we back? Um, OK. Good. Can you hear us on the stream? OK. So we are uh -huh. just testing something new in the streaming here. But yes. welcome back, everybody, from the from the break. Also, thank you for the feedback about my microphone. I tried to adjust. Let me know how things are going. I lowered the gain a little bit, and I will try to adjust more. Is Radovan too quiet now? Because it sounds much quieter to me. Testing, uh, am I too quiet? I guess. I can also try to work on the more physical gain here. I can also. Is it getting any better? OK, let's just okay. go. Let's try it out. So I'm screen sharing here what we, we now configured Git. We did a couple of commits. If you got stuck, you can you have no chance to catch up, no problem. We will now go into our first exercise session. We will give you 20 minutes for the exercise. During the exercise, you can work on your own or in a group. Some of you are together in a room. The goal will be this green box. It's also linked from the, from the document to record additional changes. Um, there, are there are instructions here, both for the command line if you want to try something new, you can also try it in the browser. If, if you want more, uh, further down on the page, you find additional green boxes, so additional optional exercises. So you can also try those. 
but these 20 minutes are also to so that you have the chance to catch up and configure and set up your editor. So we will be back in 20 minutes. And we encourage you to ask questions in the document. Also, let us know in the document how things are going. Once you have, the goal will be to create two additional commits and then to experiment a bit more with this git log, git log stat, git log one line, so that you know how to browse the history of a project. So hopefully that was all clear. Two additional commits, experiment with git log, and maybe have a look at optional exercises if you have time. And we will be back in 20 minutes on the stream. OK. So we go back to the notes. Is there anything? Oh, maybe I can say you might have seen a link to this cheat sheet in the lesson and installation instructions. So I've gone through and made circles around all the commands we've been using. And maybe that would be a good idea for you too. We'll, should we, uh, should we add on, the link to, to, the, to the notes so uh, that people yeah, know where we'll, to find it? We'll throw that in the notes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. okay. Good luck with the exercise. We'll be back 29 past the hour on stream. Okay, great. See you later. Bye. And welcome back from the exercise session. How did it Hello. go? Uh, well, we have no way of hearing you, but please let us know on uh, yeah. in the document. Looking Was at it... the notes, I see five duns. Can we go and show the notes doc? And we see where it says done. Oh, yeah. Let me scroll there. Uh, Here. Yeah. OK. So. And I seeded all of these with one O for them. So that gives some indication. So you'll see we do this often. We make these little polls where people can vote for stuff. Yeah. Any can... good questions, Q&A questions down below? So there were some also problems. So if you if you hit a problem, we, we give a solution here. Don't give up. We will have time to catch up. Um, there was there was a question about should we be worried about making too many commits? Will it fill up the disk? It will not. Uh, for for text files for code, it won't. It's not a problem to make too many commits. Mm. Um, what else should we raise here? Um, some questions about viewing the history, but maybe we can show that. Yeah. So if I go back to the lesson. Okay. What, what did we do? We created five commits now in total. And um, Richard, do you want to screen share? Do you want to show how, how the Git yeah. log uh, looks in, on, in your terminal? I'll go back to my screen share. And what we will do now, we will summarize. We will talk a little bit more about the history, about commit messages. We plan another exercise session in roughly 15 minutes. Yeah. Just that okay. people can prepare. So let's see what you got here. So here I am. I can run the first of these commands, which is git log. And it shows, so basically, what I did in reverse chronological order. So the newest commit is at the top. There was a question in the notes about what hashes were. And it's probably hard to see because this is putting it in a yellow thing. But here, my first hash is 523A9F1. And when you see hash, it's one of those. Who did it, the date, and the message. And it goes on down. Should we try the next of the commands, which is git log stat? Start. It will show basically the same thing, but in addition, it will show us which files have been modified. So I can see that yeah. this one plus, there was one line edit. 
to, yeah. to the specific yeah. files. Okay. And how did and you get out of this thing with uh, Q? Ah, Q. Yes. And, and one more one command. Line. One more git log one line. This will give give us a nice overview. Okay, this is a much shorter one. That shows. Yeah, I guess this is for looking at lots of stuff at once. Okay, so what's next? So these hashes, when some in the material we will talk about hashes, we mean these identifiers. Each commit, each commit has this unique identifier, and then you can refer to it. Mm -hmm. We can, we can also try to compare them with git diff. You can compare oh. one commit against another. Is that on here somewhere that I should run? Yes, it is. Is it this optional change? It's, uh, yeah, it's one of the optional exercises. All right, so maybe, oh, it's good to, good to show. I will just okay. put on the, I will put in the documents where we are so that people know. Yeah. Yes, OK, so I'm going to run this. So we want to see the difference between two different points in the history. So this would be like, for example, what has changed between yesterday and today, and there might be many different commits there. So let's see, I need, um, do I start by looking at one hash? Let's do step one here. Mm -hmm. So I see there's half an onion. I want to look at that one. Uh, like what happened there? Oh. Um, who changed it? What was the change message? But also, what was the change? It so, will show me the the commit content. Yeah. So git show hash two 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 five one four three. For you, it will be something else. And it shows oh, sort of like what's in the log, but also the difference here, which is adding one half onion. So let's look at the difference between two. So. Uh, if I look at the one line again, so I here in bash, I push the up arrow key twice to go back to git log one line. Mm -hmm. mm. And we see, okay, should I compare to, how yeah, about the first compare two different commits, so git diff. So I'm copying the first of the hashes and push Q. I go up and do git diff. So I'm reusing the same commit as before, and I'm adding one hash to the other hash. So should this work? I think so. Yes. Yeah, so we see. Now we don't see the commit messages, but we see everything that's changed, which is the readme was added, half an onion was added, and the whole of the instructions was added. So I guess it works. Good. Should we? Should I take the screen and we talk a little bit about commit messages? Sure. Yeah. Let me do that. OK, here I have the screen. Um, so we have seen this git log one line, which gives us a um, summary of commit messages. And it it actually only shows the first line of a commit message. Commit message is not limited to the first line. It can go over several lines. And if we browse this git log one line, I will maybe just scroll up just to show that again. If we browse git log one line, and especially if if we look, how does it look in a browser later? In the browser overview, we often see only the first line of a commit message. And the first line is the most important line. So here's a good example. Um, this is a commit message that goes over multiple lines. And the first line is should summarize it. It should be descriptive, descriptive enough. And so far, all the commits that we have created were only one line long. But if I want to add more context, if I want to add an explanation of why did I make this change, was it on which discussion it was based on, the convention is 
one line that summarizes it. And then if I need more context, one empty line and then more context. And the why something changed is much more important than what has been changed. Because we have seen now with git diff that we can inspect with git diff and git show, we can, we can look at commits. And if I'm not sure anymore what has changed, I can find out. But often I don't remember anymore why was it changed. So the why should go into the commit message. And here are some other recommendations for commit messages. Uh, Richard, what, what kind of, what would be for you the most important tip for commit messages, how to write them so that they are understandable? Mm, let's see. And I'm just informed that the screen yeah. is not visible on stream, only the webcams. Mm. Hmm. I'm working on it. Thanks for the feedback. It looks correct now. Okay, now the screen is back. Okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I would say the most important is to not let commit mes messages stop you from making commits, but also think which commits need the best commit messages. So there's sometimes I'm doing, like it's a brand new project, basically every commit changes everything. I'll just commit with a really short thing like doing my work and so on. But then there's sometimes when I do something which I know I'm going to want to look at again because it's something that, like I've fixed some major bug. So there I'll go into more detail and say, okay, here's what changed and here's why. And yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great tip. So we, the, the perfect shouldn't be the enemy of good enough. It's good to make it's not a problem to have ugly commits too many commits later later in your git career if it's important and if you want to have really nice commit messages here are also some resources something that can be fun is to browse other projects projects that you use or use as a dependency and get inspiration from them how do they describe the commits mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this is maybe for later. Yeah. And I guess these commit messages, they become a lot more important in times when there is like, um, like when you have one change per commit, what that happens when projects are mature and everything is very well controlled. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing that we should talk before we go into the next exercise session will be uh, whether we should git add and git commit all the files that we have. Mm -hmm. and, and the answer is no, we, there are files that should not be added to git. They should be ignored and there is a way to ignore them. There is a file. So if you create a file called dot git ignore in this file, we can list files and, and wildcards of files that should be ignored by git. Git should not show them if I type git status. And here's an example for Python, for a Python project. Um, so what are, how can we summarize this somehow? What, what are typical files that we should not track by git? Hmm. Well, like you say, the compiled files, if you're doing with compiled code there, if I'm controlling, say, a LaTeX document, I would version control the original tech file and not version control the PDF or anything that's coming out of it. What else? So anything generated. Mm -hmm. Anything that is generated as part of the build process can be ignored, and we typically track the sources. Yeah. OK. So the bottom line here is that oh, use git status a lot. And if git status shows you too much output, then these are either files that should be either added to git or they should be added to .gitignore. That's the recommendation to take away from here. Yeah. 
let us maybe summarize a bit what we have learned and then I can introduce the next exercise slot. And after the next exercise session, then we will take a longer break. So let's summarize a bit. We now know how to save snapshots. We did it in two steps, but we also got the question, well, can it be done in one step? Yes, it can, and it's also all right. Um, you can, if a file has been already added at least once, you can do git commit file directly. And that's, it's good enough, that's fine. We have an episode about git staging that discusses the pros and cons of doing it in two steps or in one step. But now we know how to do it. We have learned how to initialize a new repository. Some people had trouble with this option here. In this case, try it out. So it's git init. That's all it takes. We have a new repository and then we we add new files, we commit new files, and then we can inspect how does our repository look, what was the history of it, we can compare commands, we can inspect individual commits. And two commands that we didn't show was you can also remove files and rename them. Yes. What else did we miss really important to say before I explain the next exercise block? The goal of the next exercise block, and I recommend to take 15 minutes and after that, take a longer break, take a lunch break if it's, if it's around lunchtime. So after that, we will take a one hour break. But in this exercise block, you can revisit some of the optional exercises. So some of the green boxes here on this page, it can be this test your understanding. There is a solution here, but also when scrolling up, there are these optional exercises of trying to compare, make compare changes visually side by side through one of these visual tools. This requires an additional installation. You can also try, have a look at git show, git diff. And what you can also try is to try the same thing on GitHub if you haven't yet already. But for this, you need to then go back to the start of the page and really create also the repository on GitHub. So there is a step-by-step -step screenshots. You create a repository, you create the files, you add these changes. Mm -hmm. And also there you can have a look, com inspect commits, compare commits. And this will give us a good understanding of how these are related. It's basically the same thing. One is happening on our computer, the other, the other thing is happening in the web. Yeah. So goal of the next 15 minutes, okay. I'll go through the remaining exercise blocks according to your time and interest, and then take a one hour break. We will be then back at what is it, 12 o'clock Central European, 1 o'clock Finnish time, Eastern European time. Mm -hmm. And I will put instructions here on the collaborator oh, we already have. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. We will be back in the stream in 1 hour and 15, 15 minutes. And then we will talk about branches. Okay. Um, then, yeah, see you later. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hello. We should be back. Hopefully y'all can hear us. So yeah, joining us on camera after lunch is Yarno. So Yarno has been in the background being the streaming director, but now we'll be a little bit more active. We hope hopefully you all had a good lunch. And now we will have some Q&A. So Yarno, what were the most interesting questions during the oh, break time? OK, so yes, hello, everyone. Um, so at least what I picked out, well, actually, what we picked out, no, no reason to hide it. Uh, what we picked out, um, uh, there's a general question about um like what's the size of a git repository or a like thing on github like 
a project, a single piece of software, everything you have. What's your opinion? Well, um, I can answer that. So the question is, how much should we, should I make it one repository? Should I make it three repositories? I, I personally put like one, one project is one repository. And, and often we work on more than on one project. But it's really hard to estimate at the beginning. So this is a process. The, the projects then over time, they grow. And at some point, maybe I will split it into two repositories. You can also sometimes notice that the code that I need in project A, I also need in project B. And instead of copying the code between the two projects, maybe that's a good, good moment to split it off into a separate repository, which I don't include into the other two somehow. How about, how about you all? Yes, I'd say probably similar. Actually, I'll just go and say a lot of this course is talking about how to structure these repositories. And we'll see it next week in much more detail. So maybe let's save it for then. Anything else? Um, then there is this, uh, a question for the two, um, which is uh, kind of a story. So at, at, in some some course, and it might have been could might as well be in this one. Um, you might have created a dot git folder without first or initialized repository, well, which we just did without first creating a folder and going into it. I guess we didn't mm -hmm. really um, go it, through it in detail. So um, and then I might have caused issues so um yeah i mean just mm, something worth so, pointing out anything okay. more you want to say yeah i guess it's something we'll learn more next week about these like project construction and how to set it up and so on so maybe let's also postpone that and we can come back mm. next week but essentially like if you run into problems there we should have people around here to help you just don't despair if you if something unexpected happens. Yeah. yeah. OK, anything else, or do we go on? Oh, I will hide myself in the background and let you get on with the um, instruction. OK, see you in a bit. Okay, so maybe I, can, maybe I can take over the screen. Yes, here you go. Here I go. and. Also, just a brief comment about that good question. One thing I did on my computer is that I created a directory called course or workshop, and everything we will create, I will put it in there. So then you keep it organized. It's easy to find. If you later want to remove it, it's easier to remove. And we should have added this to, to our instructions, and thanks for the suggestion. So we will, we will do that for the future. I will now navigate to the next episode, branching and merging. And just so that you know what to expect for today and then what to expect for tomorrow. So today, <clears throat> in the remaining one and a half hours, we talk about how to branch, how to merge. And we will show you how we can resolve conflicts if they appear. You can expect one more exercise session. So there will be one 20-minute exercise session. Everything else will be conversation, demonstration. Tomorrow we will then take it a step further, but today the focus is on merging, uh, branching merging conflicts. So I will navigate there and then also I will zoom in here for easier readability. And we will now spend 10 minutes or so introducing what branches are and why they are useful. We will then together create our first branches. And then we will send you to a 20 minute exercise. And later we discuss what happened in this exercise. And there will be more demonstration. So, what is a branch? Um, <clears throat> okay, so branch. What is it? What, what are these mysterious things? So, let's talk about branches. Let's keep the neurons firing. Uh, Richard, before the stream started, you, you said that you had some sticky notes on your side. So, if you if you have a sticky note nearby and you can show what what I mean by a sticky note into uh, the do you have like one handy? Mm, Maybe not. 
No, I don't. All right. So I, I like to think of branches like a sticky note. It's these, you know, yellow, red sticky notes that you can stick on a board, on a, on a wall. And it's something that sticks next to a commit. And in this overview, so far what we did, we created a linear history of changes of commits. And there were five commits or more or less. And th there was, when you typed git status, I will try that. Recipe git status. You have seen that there was some mention on branch main. For some of you, it was branch master. So there is this main development line. And in Git, a branch is really like a sticky note that refers to a specific commit. And then there is also something called head, which is also a sticky note. And it refers to where we are right now. And the name head okay. comes from, uh, where does it come from? Is it like tape recorders or something like that? Recording head or something? Yeah. So it's, the, so it's, it's basically like a head. The way I look at it, head is where we, um, head is where the next commit will be. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Okay. And so it refers to a branch, branch refers to a commit. So far, everything was linear, but now we want to do something like that. We want to go back to these cute gophers. We want to be able to work on multiple things in the same repository in separate branches. And later we want to be able to merge these. And a more technical view at this is, so underneath it will look, one way of looking at this is to imagine commits as these little boxes. So in each box, there will be a change. There will be an author and an email and a timestamp and a commit message and, uh, and what was added and what was removed. So, to put this like metaphorically, here we are, I'm working on something. Someone else has the same code, they make another branch, they're working on something, and we come back together and have the common code. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'll learn how to do now. Okay. So some of these commits here, this one is branching off. So this is here a branch was created. And here, this commit, this is a merge commit. It is recombining uh, the work that happened on, on two branches into, into one. And here, the time arrow goes from left to right. And often in projects, there is a main development line. And we call it, in this course, we call it main. But sometimes, some projects call it master. And then we branch from there and we merge back into main or master. We will also need branching and we will need to understand what they are and how they work if we want to collaborate. And we will collaborate on projects then on Thursday. And also those who participate on your own, you can then also collaborate with us. So also please come on Thursday as well. Or we will, it will be able also for you to, together with us, collaborate on a project. Okay. Now, before we go, go on, should we, we will soon need to do some typing. Should we switch screen? Do you want to take over the screen? Should I type? Do you want to type, Richard? Um, I can type if my network connection is lasting. So mm -hmm. where are we going to the important alien? Shall I? Sh so the connection is a I, bit choppy there. Stop. I hope it's fine. So what we will now do, oh, oh, so you can take the screen and I will guide you through it. And and we all, please type, type with me. We will define a shortcut that will be really useful. And then we will create some branches. Okay, I'm back. Okay. So, hello, C can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well, welcome back. Um, okay. So what we will do now is, um, you can maybe take the screen, Richard. I will guide you through the next yes. steps and everybody else, please also follow in your 
terminals with me. As a first step, we will define this really useful shortcut. And it's a okay. shortcut. So, um, so here I am. Define a, a Git, so, so this line there, git config global alias graph, you can copy that into your terminal. What it will do, it will define a so-called alias. Alias is another word for shortcut. And instead of typing git log dash dash all dash dash graph dash dash decorate dash dash one line, which would be really boring to do that over and over again, we will define a shortcut which we call graph, and we will be able to do git graph instead. So this is we also wanted to show you how you can define your own shortcuts if you if you are interested. But this is a very useful one. Okay. So type enter. Okay. Mm enter yes okay now and maybe let's try it out git graph in if you are still in the same guacamole recipe from before mm, yes okay and what do we see here so it's... it looks somewhat familiar but i see a few new things like i see head is pointing to main that looks a lot like the picture you saw mm -hmm. i see the commits and the hashes and I guess we'll see more when we go further. Great. Okay. And we see these identifiers, and we see that we they are abbreviated. Uh, mm -hmm. We see only the seven first characters, but that is actually enough yeah. to refer to them. The Git graph will look a lot more interesting once we start branching out, because then also in the graph, we will see this graph forming. OK. So do we start doing stuff? So let's start do, do stuff. Next? And the next step, and now we really want everybody typing. So everybody should have this Git graph defined. It will be useful. Okay. And now scrolling down a little bit more, um, we will now create and work with branches. We will create two branches. No, sorry. We will create one branch, one additional branch. And we call it, we will call it experiment because we will try something out. We are not sure about it yet. And we want to do that on a new branch. OK. So I can also say that those of you who started previously creating the repository on GitHub directly, it is possible to create branches there as well. But we don't have screenshots for this yet. Yeah. So here we will do that in the terminal. OK. And a little bit further down here, you see these, these three, three new commands that we introduce. Mm -hmm. The first one that we will switch. use is git branch experiment main. That will create a new branch called experiment. And it will create it from the main branch. So if you think like a you know, growing tree, from the tree trunk, which is main, there is a new branch then coming out, which will be called experiment. Yes. OK, should I do this or yes. not yet? No, go for it. Please type so everybody. Should I do I do th them all in order? Let's do them one by one. Yeah. So git okay. branch experiment main. So this makes a new branch called experiment from where main was. Yes. Should I run git graph in between all of these to see what's happening? That's a great idea. So git graph. So here I see now there's still head is pointing at main, but there's a new branch called experiment. So now we have two branches. They, they are they both, two sticky notes, they both stick next to the same commit. We didn't create a new commit yet. Now we want to switch to the experiment branch. Okay. We can do that with git switch. OK. So that, should I do git graph again? Yeah, that's it. What and now we see head point to experiment. So that's good. Should we go on to git branch? Yeah. And git branch is a command which doesn't create a new branch, but it shows me all the available branches, and it shows me on which I am. So we are then on the experiment branch and about to make a new commit. 
We didn't create the new commit yet. Okay. So there's some good questions in the notes. So some people have master instead of main, in which case, if you get some error, try git branch experiment main. And there's a good question about checkout versus switch. And that's something that can be answered in the text there, I think. So what do we do next? Um, oh, we did run git branch and we verified. So here we see that the asterisk is next to experiment, which verifies that we've actually checked that out. We've switched to it. And that means we'll be working there, like Radovan said. So do we start doing stuff? Yes, we will. On the experiment branch, we want to uh, make an addition. We will add two tablespoons of cilantro. Mm -hmm. we, will, so, uh, yeah. we will then commit it. And then we will change our mind because not everybody likes cilantro. So in a, in a follow-up commit, we will reduce the amount of cilantro. Okay. Also, so I'll do it. I'll let you do it. I have I'm I lost internet, but I'm still in this stream, which is interesting. So I will be back in a few seconds, but you keep talking okay. um, because I don't yeah. see the notes anymore. Yeah. Okay. Um so here I am. I get uh no, first I'm on experiment. So I do nano for the ingredients dot txt. I open it and I'm adding two tablespoons cilantro. Great. So TBSP so, and I'm back. Now I, can I think it might be important to add the two tablespoons of cilantro at the top of this. Also, I'm really entertained by using measures of tablespoons and teaspoons here, but I guess that's okay. So I will do our trusty save, control X, enter. Control X, Y, and Enter. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to commit this, git add ingredients. Uh, mm. OK, so that's committed. Now and we're going to reduce commit, it. We reduce it to, let's say, 1. So I edit the file again. I reduce it to 1 tablespoon, exit, save, I get add the ingredients and get commit. Okay, so there's two more commits. Uh, and then before we move on, let's try again this git graph. Okay. And now it's interesting because now it's still linear, but the main branch is now a little bit behind. Uh, the, new, the two new commits that we created, they have not modified the main branch. They happened on the experiment branch. And now we are almost ready for the exercise. One thing that will be helpful for the exercise if we all switch back to main before we go on to, to avoid a typical mistake. Okay. So let's switch back to main how did that work git switch main git switch main switch to branch main and then verify again that mm. either with git branch or git graph verify that we are really on back on main yeah personally i always use git graph because it shows everything okay i see we're on main because head is pointing there so now it's exercise time so um let me explain what what the expectation is for the exercise so first of all let me double check the timing we have 20 minutes for the exercise in the exercise you will you will create another branch called less salt and guess what on that branch you will reduce the number of the amount of salt you will also make one more one more commit on the main branch and then you will start so Richard, if you scroll a little bit down, everybody, you will then start seeing, if you go to the graph, that the graph is starting to branch out. It starts looking like a tree. 
so a little bit below to the like image. Okay, let's see. Ah, here, here we go. Yeah, so now we've actually got a branch in there. Yeah, so you will create one more branch, a couple of more commits, and things will start more looking like a tree. And in the same exercise session, then try to also merge the changes back into main. And you will see okay. instructions for it further below. So yes. you can try both in the in the exercise session. Okay. And uh, we will then also demonstrate it and discuss it then back here on the stream. Mm -hmm. Wait, so are people merging it right now? Or we merge after? I recommend that people merge uh, already during the exercise session. Okay. But we will also demonstrate it and discuss it later. So okay. time will be... Hmm? Go ahead. Yeah, we will be back then. Well, uh, uh, forty-three minutes past the hour. Yes. And the goal will be create, create branch, create commits, and try to merge these changes. Okay, sounds good. So, should we go? Yes. So I will just summarize. So it's branch one and branch two. That's the exercises. Ah, okay. Good luck, everybody. Twenty minutes. And then we will be back here to discuss. Keep the questions coming and see you 43 past the hour. OK, great. See you later. Bye. Bye. And welcome back, everybody, from exercise. Oh, we Hello. hope you have um, managed to create branch, create commits. Maybe it didn't go exactly according to plan. It's not a problem. We Part of the exercise was also to try to merge these branches back into the main branch. But we thought it would be still useful if we here on stream demonstrate now that we have these branches. So we have experiment and we have less salt and we have main. And now we are happy with all these developments. How do we get back, them back into the main branch? And Richard will now type along. So this is something that you have done in the exercise, but if you haven't finished it, you can now type with us. We will now do the merging together. And then uh, before the break, we will then open up the collaborative document and we will really try to keep this as a Q&A. So we will keep it open and we hope we get many, many, many questions. Okay, so I type. Well, so let's try to merge them in. So first of all, yep. where are you? Git status, just to make sure that you are back uh, on main. That's always good. Because yes. when we merge in Git, we always mod modify our current branch, never any other branch. So we want to make sure that we are on the branch where we want to merge into, in your case, main. Good. And now in which order were we supposed to do this? We were okay. supposed to first just so double checking let's here. Let's scroll down. Okay, here we are, merging branches. Merge experiment and less salt back. Okay, so uh, first experiment, just to follow the example. Yes. So I'm on main and mm -hmm. I'm typing what this says. Git 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 merge experiment. And so I'm on main, so it updates main to include experiment. I'm going to mm -hmm. do it. Yep, enter. Oh, a message. So it wants me to save something here. So I guess I just save the editor. Yep. OK. So here and... I could be writing a message explaining about the merge, but I'm mm -hmm. not going to do that. OK. Is that well, new by any chance? But notice should... that we we got a new merge commit. Yeah. Should I git graph? Yeah, git graph, and we will see okay. that there is a new new little asterisk. In your case, it's the 921. A new merge commit that combined experiment into main. And now let's try the same thing with the salt branch. Okay. I'm scrolling down. Uh, should I run this git branch merge thing again? No, let's just go. I git run merge. git branch. 
Oh, yeah, good branch. We are on we main. We see. Good. Yes, we're on main. Git merge less salt. And again, it asked me to enter something, but I just save and exit. And now let's get graph. And OK, this graph starts to become a bit more complicated. So now I'm here. So from here, I see less salt connects up to the, or the no, main branch connects to less salt. And main branch also connects to experiment. And main branch also connects to clarify recipe title. Mm -hmm. So now from this one commit, I see everything goes into it. OK. And now we have, we have incorporated these changes into main. We could now delete the branches, mm -hmm. or we could go straight away into Q&A. Should we try to delete them together and see what, what happens? Sure. Let's do it. So I do what's suggested here, git branch merged, and I, I see. Mm -hmm. So it lists all of these branches. So main is merged into main because it is main, but it shows less salt and experiment are done. Mm -hmm. So I run the deletes. Yep. Bit branch dash D. Experiment. Experiment. And also less salt. And after that, it's interesting to go back to Git graph because we will see that the only thing that disappeared are these sticky notes. Mm. But the commits are still around. Yeah. Okay. Great. So with that, Q&A time. Q&A time. Let's open up the collaborative document and then let's lift some questions here. Yeah. And discuss them. And thanks for keeping them coming. Hello. So I'll switch to the collaborative document. Yeah. I'm just going up to the exercise. And okay. Done from there. Here we are. So the first thing would be, um, let's see. So, OK, the first thing um, that jumps out is this uh, question about what does it mean that the two branches didn't diverge? So this is about um, when does fast forward happen and what does it mean exactly? Should I try to answer? Yeah, I'd say go for it. Um, so if you look at these graphs, so either in Git graph or these little boxes on our website, um, I wonder whether we can show them. You can think of each commit has a parent commit and has children. So imagine you go, it's like a family tree going from left to right. And if they are ancestors, meaning that one commit is like an ancestor of another. So if it's a parent or grandparent, if I merge two branches, which are one is the ancestor of another, Git will try to do it by moving the sticky note and not creating a new merge commit. But if the two branches are sort of cousins or second degree cousins, thinking in terms of a family tree, then in order to merge them back, it has to create a new merge commit. So fast forward is, is a technique to incorporate one branch into the other without creating a new merge commit, simply by moving the sticky note over. I hope that was somehow helpful. We have an optional exercise on it and hopefully a sufficient explanation in there. Yes. More questions. Um, there's a few questions um, about conflicts, which okay. I guess we will go to later. Yeah, let's postpone them because we will demonstrate. We will demonstrate to you how we create a conflict and how we resolve a conflict after the break. In so I think what minutes. is worth though uh, pointing out is that there are these recovery instructions. Oh, sorry, I clicked on that. Um, Fortunately, to open the tab. So there are these recovery instructions that you can follow to get back to the situation where the uh, rest of us are. 
Nierno, I think our webcams aren't in the stream right now. Good point. Let's add them so that you can see us talking. Yes. Okay. So which question were we on? Um, well, there were several of these conflict-related questions. One was 51. Mm. No, no, 50. Yeah. So um, the point of conflicts is tomorrow. So I guess we can get there then. Should we talk yeah, about what is in the view 56? Mm, get switch yeah. versus get checkout? Yes. Yeah, so what would you think about these? Um, so in this material we have, we are using git switch. That's a relatively modern way. And we understand that on some older git, you might get an error and you might need to use git checkout instead. Git checkout is the traditional way to switch between branches. The reason why we prefer git switch is it's, it communicates clear what it really does. We are switching branches. Git checkout can do the same, but it can do a bit more. And it can do at least three different things that are very different. And in past workshops, we found it confusing. We had to explain that this git checkout command can do all these very different things. One of them is switching branches. So that's why we prefer it, because it's more explicit. OK, any other good questions coming? So no, you can't delete a branch you're currently on. Um, if you don't get this comment after merging to main, so I'm wondering if I somehow have a newer Git that's prompting me to make a commit message when there's mm -hmm. like in a case where it didn't used to, because I also was a bit surprised by that. But if the command returns and doesn't give any error message and graph shows it works, it's safe to assume that it's worked and don't worry. And maybe one question that is not here, but that we can take a step back. So now we know how to create branches and we know how to merge them. But why did we do this again? Um, so what is the, why do we like branches? What, when, when are you, Jana and Richard, when is the moment that you use additional branches? Or is it okay to, to do everything on main? If I'm working myself and I'm the only one on something and it's still relatively new, I'll often just work on one branch because it's like whatever. But if I'm doing something that I know maybe I don't want this everywhere right now, I do a branch. So for example, if I'm thinking about messing everything up, but I still need to use the original code for a while, then I'll make a branch and do that test before merging back. But when I'm in projects with multiple people on then, then it's branches all the time. So basically then anytime I do something, I don't change it for everyone right away. I make a branch, I do it, I sort of test it, and then I send it back to what everyone is using. And this we learn about on uh, Thursday. What about y'all? I mean, yeah, essentially the same answer. So um, we, when I'm starting on a new project, I will just come into the main branch because it doesn't really work anyway. Um, if I get to a working version where I actually just want to keep that working version around, I will switch to another branch to um to do the development and then merge back when i have something that i'm a bit more satisfied with with and if i'm working with another person then it's always on a branch and this is also why one reason why we spent one and a half hours on branches is that we will need them for collaboration mm. once we start collaborating in git at least we are all on separate branches even if they have the same name we will make sense of this on Thursday, but we need to understand branches if we want collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, this git graph alias is basically what I use for everything. So when I'm working on other stuff, I can see what other people are doing. I can see like how my branches and changes relate to what other people have done and so on. Yeah. I really okay. appreciate all the questions coming in. I recommend that we 
take a 10 minute break. And after the break, we will come back for a demonstration. We will demonstrate here, we will create a conflict and we will resolve it in one or two different ways together here as a demonstration on stream. So how about we are all back uh, seven minutes past the hour for the remaining 25 minutes of stream. Sounds okay, good. Okay, sounds good. Then see, see you then you. seven past the hour. Bye. See you. See you then. Bye. And welcome back, everybody, for the last session of today. We will now, we have like 25 minutes less, even uh, 25 minutes left, maybe even a little bit less. We will talk about Git, conf Git conflicts, what they are, why, that, why they are a good thing. They are not, not a bad thing. They are a good thing and why, how we can resolve them. And then we will hopefully have some time for some more Q&A. This worked really nicely that we opened up the document and got more questions flowing in. And at the end, we will give you a preview of what to expect tomorrow, how to prepare for tomorrow, how to prepare for Thursday, if you have time. So let me explain you, let me show you an example for when, when a conflict appears. And then we will demonstrate one uh, live here in the terminal. And you can think that, well, let's start from a file that looks like this. It looks like our ingredients file. And imagine that from this file, now we create two branches, branch A and branch B. And on branch A and on branch B, the same file gets modified in two different ways, which is here highlighted. Hopefully it's visible with this yellow background. So on branch A, somebody really likes cilantro, increases to two tablespoons, but also wants to have more lime. Good idea, in my opinion. On branch B, the same person or some other person modifies the same file in a different way. Uh, here, the person wants to have a little bit more onion, but less cilantro. And then you have these branches, then at the end, when we try to merge them back into main, we what do we expect? What, what we expect is that if you try it, and we will try it in a moment, Git will actually understand that we wanted two lime and one onion, so it will combine this change and this change automatically, but it will not know whether it should now increase the amount of cilantro or decrease the amount of cilantro. So the same portion of the code recipe got modified in two different ways. Git, Git cannot decide this and raises a conflict. And now a question to my colleagues here, why is that a good thing? So let's see. So first off, I guess it's better that Git actually does nothing than does something wrong. But let's look at it a deeper way. Who's ever experienced the idea of, can you send me the latest version so I can make my edits? Does this scale? Does this actually work? Do you actually ever get a time to do what you need to? It just, I mean, it's just a quite annoying way to do work overall. So the fact that we have conflicts means that people can do multiple things at the same time. And it will say, okay, so of the things you did, one is okay, and one is the same as someone else. So you need to resolve this. And since there's a tool to resolve it, it's actually not that big a deal. There's a slow process and yeah. And exactly. also, I mean, really conflicts don't happen that much. So for all the amount of code I write and work I do, conflicts are really quite rare and really not that bad. It's only really bad if two people go do the exact same thing in two different ways. But then basically what you would do is you'd say, okay, well, let's take a step back. We need to take one of these and move all the differences to the first side. Mm -hmm. Okay. So often yeah. um, we can 
avoid conflicts or minimize conflicts if we talk to each other and coordinate a bit for bigger changes. Yeah. But what if a conflict happens? Should we try to create a conflict, see how it looks, see how it behaves, and how we can solve it? Yeah, let's do it. I guess I'll share my screen again. Yep. Take it from okay. me. And the, the listeners, learners, if you want to type along, you can. You, but you can also watch us do it and then try that later. We will follow the instruction on the web page. So Am I going to, go, to a new episode? We need to go to a new episode, conflict resolution. Also, the link is in the notes. And then scroll okay. down a little bit until preparing a conflict. OK. Preparing a conflict. So I guess now I'm going to do the same thing twice. OK. Almost uh, the same thing. Here we are. Well, yeah, almost. Actually, if we did the same thing twice, it would say, this is done twice, but it's the same, so we'll just accept it. Yep. OK. And because Centro is a controversial vegetable, we will we will create two branches from okay. main. Uh, one we will call like cilantro, the other one we will call dislike cilantro. And you okay. can already anticipate what will happen on the two. On one of them, we will increase the amount of the other one. In the other one, we will decrease the amount. OK. So now here, the lesson doesn't say exactly what to type, but I know by now. Yeah. So I'm going to get Get switch like. Uh, On the like, we increase it. I added ingredients. So should we double it? Yeah, let's double. Yes. Save. Yes. And should I commit all at once? Yes. Do you accept me doing this? Yeah, that's fine. OK. It's good uh, to be sure how to do that. Yeah. So if, to be clear, I do git commit with the file name, and it adds everything in that file and commits at the same time. Mm -hmm. And now I git switch, switch to the dislike. Dislike cilantro. Git check, or uh, no. Uh, nano ingredients.txt. Oh, well, it's back like it was before. That should not surprise anyone since we just switched to the old version. Mm -hmm. So I have it. I will control X to save and Y for yes. Enter. OK. Git commit ingredients.txt dash M. Uh, Cilantro. Should we do a good graph? OK. Get graph. So this tells me I see I currently have this like cilantro checked out. And we see the two diverging commits here. Mm -hmm. OK. And we can also try to compare. So earlier today, we, we showed that we, you can do, you can use git diff to compare mm. commits, but you can also use git diff to compare branches. So if you want to see what is the difference between main and like cilantro. OK. But I'm still on the dislike cilantro branch. But that's fine. You can or, still yeah. compare any two branches from wherever. So here we see the difference between the two is one has one half and one has two, which makes sense. Yeah. OK. Um, should, should I go on? Yeah, let's go on and let's now let's try to merge them. So let's are the let's notes switch. Of, let's switch back to main. Be, should people be typing along right now? If they really want it, but it's I think it's better at this moment to to watch us uh, okay. do this together. Yeah. Okay. And you can give us hints. You can also ask us questions. Yes. I'm watching those. So we go back to the main branch, and we will now okay. we will now merge them back. We are. And maybe first, uh, first we merge the like cilantro, and the, in, the okay. in the second step we will merge dislike. It proposes git status, and really running git status and git graph before and after every time you merge 
is a good idea to just keep stuff organized in your head would keep stuff organized in Git. So Git status, on branch main, nothing to commit work three clean, good. Yep. And we know what the graph looks like. So let's and merge. Now we also know how to merge. And this one okay. works. Yeah. Should we look at the graph? Let's look at it. So here we see main now looks like, like cilantro. And for those who ask about what is this fast forward, so the, the sticky note main moved from so what did what the Git did? It took the sticky note from 6db8 and it put it on on top of C170. So that was a fast forward merge. It worked, but if you if we now try to merge the other one, we expect trouble. Git merge dislike. Oh. Conflict. Okay, here we go. Conflict. And what do we do? So first we stop and we notice there's conflict and we read. Merge conflicts in ingredients.txt, which means that's where I have to look. Automatic merge failed, fix the conflicts, which means edit the file, then commit the results. So, okay. I guess we open it in the editor. Oh, my favorite command for us to get status. Oh yeah, okay. So here we see a bit more difference on merge paths. And it, oh, it gives us a hint. We fix conflicts and run git commit. Or what we'd want to do if you want to go backwards. Yeah, and it also tells me that I need to somehow mark the resolution with git add, and we will see that. Oh, I also like its status because it shows me which files are the conflicting ones. In this case, this was a simple example. But in real life, like all the files that were unproblematic will be green on top. And all the red files that both modified, they are listed here. And now we can go in and look at look at those. Okay. So I open it in the editor. Open it up in your editor. No, no, ingredients. Okay. Hmm. So yeah. here I see both versions. I see the head and I see, no, I see two tablespoons and I see one half tablespoons. So do I basically have to decide what it should be? Yes, so here we need to make a decision. A Git has in inserted these markers. So these smaller, 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 equal, 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 larger, larger. So they are, they are inserted by Git as resolution markers. So when I open my file, I look for these. And now we go through them and now we need to make a decision. Okay. And here for the sake of demonstration, I recommend that we maybe so take the design by moving the markers. What if we say cilantro to taste? That will also work. So it doesn't have to be one of the two. It needs to be a it needs to be a human decision here. I Personally, uh, I like to not modify one of the two because it it can create a bit of a confusing history if you then follow later the commits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we will hear, once we are ready, we will get a merge commit. And yeah. then something actually changes in the merge commit. Mm -hmm. Could be confusing, but could be also yeah. right. So we can decide one of, one of the two or something else. Yeah. Am I ready to go? Yeah, but now you have two lines there. Yes. So oh, that's that, was maybe, that was the intent, so, maybe. Yeah. So we. This would be a bad thing if I let this extra straight line come in there. So yeah, it's worth removing it to make sure it's good. We do yes. We save. Should I do git status? Mm -hmm. OK, so it says this. It still says unmerged, but git add to mark resolution. Yeah, because we, we removed these markers, but that that doesn't mean that Git now automatically continues from it. We need to tell Git that we are happy, we have re resolved the conflict. So now we stage the change and then commit the change. Yeah. So Git sure. add ingredients, Git commit. Should I run Git diff first? Oh yeah, we have or that in that the Git diff is Git diff. useful because it will only show you the, the part that was conflicting. Yeah. 
So here we see it actually nicely shows the two removed versions with minus signs in front and the result version here. So I will quit with the queue as usual. And do we get get add now and get yeah. it? So if I push tab here, it's auto-completing ingredients. So if you see me do that, that's a good trick for Bash. Get add ingredients, get status, changes to be committed, use git commit to conclude the merge, git commit. And it says merge branch just like Cilantro. Do we have a commit message here? Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, that, that is the commit message that we see. And we can, here, since we actually modified it, it's good to add something in there. Uh, people choose. People choose, give, range. Good. Okay, I save and exit. And we have resolved the conflict. Yes. And so for everybody, you can practice this. Should we get graph? Mm -hmm. And we see now here again the two points come together and connect to main. Yeah. So was that hard? In this case, it wasn't. Uh, in it's not technically hard once we know what to do. So what is what are the steps? The steps are first brief, <laughs> then git status. A look at the files that are read, look for the resolution markers, and make a decision. The difficult part is that in real projects, sometimes we, we cannot make the decision because it is sometimes other people's changes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it means that now I need to go and email somebody and ask uh, how that works if I can't resolve it on my own. Yeah. And in and... this situation, it's good to know that you can always abort there is no reason to delete everything and buy a new computer. You you can do <laughs> git merge abort and go back. So a conflicting merge doesn't create a new commit. It kind of stops halfway, but you can abort it if you need to talk to somebody else first and collect more information. Mm -hmm. mm, we're getting some error messages. Or there's some notes in hack and D, I guess they can be answered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my recommendation now is that we we could demonstrate the same thing. So there are some more ways to resolve a conflict, also graphical ways, but you can find them in the material. It's possible to also resolve a conflict directly on GitHub. And my recommendation is that, well, tr try to create a conflict on GitHub and see how does it look. You can you will see the same elements there and you can resolve a conflict through the web interface. We can maybe use the remaining five minutes on questions and answers. What we should also do is that we remind everybody to give us feedback about today. So at the bottom of the document, mm -hmm. I wonder whether we should start sharing it. Should I take the screen share of the document? Yeah. Maybe Yarno can head to it. I, yes, I will switch to the hackman. Mm -hmm. So at the bottom of the document, we are asking you for feedback. The feedback is really important for us. How did it go? How was the speed? Tell us one thing that was really good. Also, please always tell us also one thing that we should change, remove, improve for tomorrow or next time. We look at this feedback, we implement it, and already tomorrow we can make things better. So this is the way to improve. Okay, let's see, what are these questions and answers? Mm. So if, if people try this and, uh, and it didn't create a conflict, then my suspicion is that the two branches were not created from main before you did the modifications. Yeah. Oh, the modifications uh -huh. didn't happen probably on on uh, separate branches, but maybe the modifications happened one after the, the other. And if they happen one after the other on the same, right. like so, following the graph, then, then there won't be a conflict because Git assumes that, well, you wanted to do the first thing and then you wanted to do the other thing. Mm -hmm. 
So you made like cilantro, and he made dislike cilantro from like cilantro. So you just yeah. reduced the dislike immediately. Yeah. So this is why checking Git graph can be useful because, I mean, there's so many different ways things can go weird. And yeah, I mean, the mistake now, that happens to me often is that I create the branch at the wrong place. Mm, same, uh, yeah, and, yeah. But we, uh, the nice thing is that in our Git intro, you can find on the menu bar there is a we can we have a recovery episode, and we have a recovery for exactly the situation, creating commits in the wrong branch. Uh, so you can you can recover from these. Yeah. Okay. Um, merge tool integrated with VS Code. Yeah, so the different editors and so on. The, there's tools that will show the conflicts in an easier way. So for example, it can show the two versions side by side and in the middle is what it will be. And you basically pull stuff from both sides. These are really nice, but there's so many different ways to do it and everyone has different editors and environments. It's a bit hard to teach that way but something you should definitely experiment with some. That was question 65. I think question 66 is also interesting because it goes to what actually is a conflict according to Git. So if you, in one branch, change from one line to two lines, and in another branch, change from one onion to half an onion, um, that might conflict in the sense that they don't actually, if you merge both of those, the recipe doesn't really work that well. But I would guess that Git doesn't mind. Git doesn't think it's a conflict. That's a good point. There's conflicts of the lines and conflict of the recipe. For example, if I say add a ton of garlic at the top, and Radovan said, add a ton of garlic at the bottom, and we merged it, it would say two tons of garlic, which is probably not what we actually wanted. So later, but not this week, I think we will talk about code review, and that's what yeah. is the solution to this problem. So. This is not some like an automatic conflict that Git will recognize, but it is still possible that we have yeah. great conflicts. Yeah, it will be this week. And I also really appreciate the feedback here. So the feedback seems to be that speed has increased today a little bit too much. So we will try to adjust. Thanks a lot for the feedback. Yeah. What do what to expect for tomorrow and what to prepare for tomorrow? Tomorrow we will learn how to Take the thing that we created here, the recipe, and be able to put it out on GitHub. For this to work, it's really good if you set up either the SSH keys, look at our install instructions, or what was the other name? Uh, there is an alternative for chat. Uh, Git Credential Manager. Yeah, or, or the Credential yeah. Manager. So there are these two ways to authenticate to GitHub. So we will need that tomorrow yeah. for 20 minutes, but we will need that a lot on Thursday. So please set it up. Yes. Tomorrow we will learn that. We will do an interesting Sherlock Holmes archaeology episode where we will learn how to really go through the history and find things in there and how, how useful that can be for your own work. And then we will also have a session on recovering from typical mistakes. Then we will create mistakes, either intentionally or unintentionally, and we will learn how to recover from it. So that's the plan for tomorrow. Thursday collaboration. And also, if you participate on your own, you will be able to collaborate with us. We will send you instructions on how that can work via email, hopefully today, latest tomorrow. Yes. What else? What did I forget? OK. Um, hmm. I just see somebody selected the whole document. Be very careful with it, because if somebody selects the whole document and types on uh, times or character, then everything will disappear. So please unselect. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And 
should we conclude here? Yeah, I guess it's good. We'll keep answering the questions for a few more uh, hours until it gets archived, and then you'll find it on the website. Yeah, so we'll archive them later today. Thanks so much for all the questions and the feedback and the comments and the help. Thanks to all the everybody here, organizers and team leaders and expert helpers who are either visible here or really invisible, doing lots of lots of work in the background. Thanks to all of you. Thanks for your time. And we will be back tomorrow, same time slots, and do a little bit more Git. And all the questions that will come up today, bring them tomorrow. We can uh, We can then talk more about it. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks. See you later. Bye.